Hello, I'm Sean Kenny, and I'm playing some more Kerbal Space Program looking at the Cathay mod. So, last video, uh, you can see my, the debris of my previous attempt at landing on the Mun. Uh, quite wisely, this time I decided to wait for daytime. And just coming down to the final approach, it's pretty much the exact same rover. I added a couple of these command pods to try and rescue those Kerbals uh, that are stuck down there. Um, Although I, I didn't really think it through, I, I realized that those side tanks are designed to, to drop away and then leave this center capsule is designed to return to the Kerbal. Uh, so what it might have to try and do is actually try and land the rover back at um, on, on Kerbin uh, after we recover these uh, Kerbals. Whether that'll work or not, I don't know, but uh, I'm... On the final descent here, I think we should be able to to land. Things are going a lot better this time. Uh, I redesigned the boosters so I had a little bit more uh, initial thrust, so I have a lot more fuel. Um, although I just lost those two side tanks, but uh, definitely lasted me a lot longer this time around. And let's say we're about three clicks up, and I just want to keep trying to. Uh, I want to keep dece decelerating reasonably fast enough because if you're um, if you start coming down too slow from a too high altitude, uh, it does take forever and it's going to uh, really it's going to eat up all your fuel. Uh, in this case, uh, you know, I've got pretty much almost that whole tank left, and we're uh, we're coming down pretty good here. Definitely a lot easier to see. I'd say I found a much flatter plane trying to land this time. <laughs> And uh, doing it in the daytime is uh, is the way to go. Uh, but here we get that same kind of uh, all right. So we're decelerating at a good speed. Oh shit! Keep doing that. straight down at this point. Oh, and touchdown. Ha <laughs> ha. Alright, so we've made it to the Mun and we're pretty darn close to our uh, our first disastrous attempt. Uh, so I've actually keep it. Well, what what I'll do is I'll start by mining a bit of cathane. Uh, I've assigned these um, the drills to a, an action group two, so I can just press two to toggle them on or off. And there they go. And we should be in the. There we. Yep. And we're in luck. So everything seems to be working. We're going. We're uh, we're drilling for cathane and. Well, at this rate, it might take a little while to fill up. Uh, interestingly enough, the drills themselves are, are enough to, to draw the energy from those four um, reactors. So I'm, I also put uh, the action group on the solar panels. So I'm going to deploy those, and hopefully that will be enough uh, power so that we're not, we're not draining our reserves. Oh, yeah, that's more than enough. All right. So, at this point, it would be kind of uh, just let, let it run, um, which we can use time acceleration for. And we'll get ourselves a full tank of fuel. Okay, so now we have a full tank of cathane. So what you do is you right-click on the converter unit, and this is going to give us the options to convert it into liquid fuel, convert it into oxidizer. Uh, you can also convert it into monopropellant, which is the uh, for RCS. Um, although I don't really, I pretty much just have that on a capsule. Um, that's in case, you know, pretty much in the capsule and I need to do any final maneuvers to get back into uh, a descent for, for Kerbin. Um, and you can also convert it into xenon gas. Uh, so if you if you're using say a um, 
like a rover or using uh, ion engines, then then you can use it to, to refuel that way. Um, so I guess at this point, let's uh, just start converting it, and we can convert it to start both. And uh, yeah, it looks like we have enough power. So that's going to start converting it and uh, filling up our tanks. Yeah, there's filling up those side tanks. So we can accelerate some more time. And that's basically, it's, uh, we can convert it faster than we can mine it, I guess. There we go. Okay, those tanks. So we're all full on fuel and we're full on caffeine. So uh, now we're we're totally refueled, which is great. We can uh, retract those the drill bits, and I'm going to turn the brakes off, and we're going to go rescue our uh, our stranded herbals. And so. Gotta be a little careful with this rover. It's a little, it's definitely top heavy. So it's uh, definitely not built for high performance. Um, thankfully, there's no atmosphere so uh, on the MUN, so we can have the solar panels deployed while we're moving around. Uh, while testing this out on Kerbin, I found, you know, basically in an atmosphere, if you're moving yeah, pretty much five, six meters per second, uh, those solar panels will just uh, break right off. Uh, so in the case, so for example, in the case of like, uh, Dune, Duna, if, if you're going there and you have a bunch of sol solar panels on a rover, um, at least these ones that deploy like that, you, you, if you're moving around fairly quickly, you'll want to, uh, to retract them in while you're moving. And then when you've sort of gotten to where you want to go and you need to get more power, then you can uh, deploy them at that point. Um, although in a vacuum that's not going to be a concern uh, thankfully so but at this point I'm not even really accelerating I think we're just we're rolling yeah we're rolling down a hill and uh, just tapping B <laughs> so that we don't get going too fast because uh, it does get a little unstable and we'll we'll tip over or something so I managed to, to land fairly close to the uh, the wreckage site of the previous uh, craft the ill-fated Keth Miner. So we've sent the Keth Miner to a slight upgrade, although not entirely thought out as far as the uh, recovery part portion goes. Uh, I don't know whether this will actually be able to land on uh, Kerbal on uh, yeah on the main planet because uh, there's you know a lot of gravity, a lot of a lot more atmosphere. It's, you know, it's definitely going to be trickier. Uh, these engines aren't designed for working in atmospheres, so it may not even have the thrust to do it. So what I might just do is just grab these guys up in there and, and I might have to send like a, a slight, a small recovery shuttle or something and uh, I'd be able to move them in, in the uh, rover over to, to wherever I, you know, so I probably won't be able to land right right next to them uh, but you know I was able to get within the same sort of hex grid so but still that's still a fairly large area having vehicles helps see, see all the debris scattered about on that cl cliff side <laughs> or hillside uh, definitely um, always try and land during the day uh, anytime I've tried night landings it's been it, it had gone very well for me so I'm not even now we're definitely accelerating pretty quick here we're going at this point I can't even just slam on the brake because I will tip over Gotta manual ABS braking <laughs> to quickly, quickly tapping B to slowly bleed off speed otherwise we're gonna plow right past these guys and hopefully when we hit that 
the hill going up, we won't be uh, accelerating anymore. I'll start to decelerate a bit. And the nice thing, uh, you can repair if you do, uh, if you're going kind of fast, sometimes you can break wheel on rovers. Uh, if you have kerbals in it, they can repair the wheels, uh, which is great. Um, I understand that that's kind of some of their plans that they're there's going to be more options available for Kerbals uh, as far as like what they can repair and, and modify on the ship sort of in flight. Uh, I, as far as I know, that's not coming in this the, the, the upcoming update, but uh, from what I've read, they, they have talked about that. That is sort of something that they're looking at as far as maybe... I, th I think you can actually repair solar panels as well if uh, one of those breaks. Here we are. All right. Your rescue has arrived, fellas. Well, at least you won't be stuck lonely in in a craft like that. We'll be a uh... well. I can use switch over here and uh... let's eva them. And we can load them up on our uh, on our miner for at least they'll be more or less safe. But like I said, I'm not sure about trying to bring this uh, back to Kerbin and trying to land it because uh, that seems uh, that's gonna be the only way. That's uh, oh, I need to. Uh, uh, that's the other part. And all these parts flying around, so trying to cycle through them. There we go. We need to uh, deploy those ladders. We can deploy these ladders as well so that maybe we can go out and explore a little bit. Yeah, these uh, these pods I put on, I think they only, they only hold two kerbals, so that's why I put two of them on there, because we have uh, three stranded. Maybe we'll have to use the uh, Jetpack. There we go. Uh, oh, oh! I wanted to do an IVA, but I guess maybe you can't do that because these are not actual commands. Say so this is the primary command module, so these are just more, uh, more or less extra storage, so. As I, I haven't actually, uh, those, th I've sort of went through my space station phase before those, uh, command modules were added, and I haven't done a space station yet that incorporated them, so I don't quite know what they look like on the inside, but as, um, with the, uh, the new update, I'm, I'm going to be doing some videos on that, so I, I will be doing space stations at that point. Oh, it can only hold one? Well, okay. I guess, uh, there's an argument to be read, uh, for, for reading <laughs> part descriptions before you actually use them, so, uh, Probably getting an, an extra rescue ship is going to be the ultimately the way I have to go about getting these uh, guys back, but uh, I can get a couple of them loaded up, and just uh, one person will be stranded in the command pod of the other ship. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Come on, no time for breakdancing. Well, you know what, like, we have a bunch of fuel, so why not? Let's try it, actually. May end up killing them all, but, uh... Sorry, buddy, you'll have to wait for the next trip. Um... But we want to do, what, maybe one moonwalk here. Oh, maybe I could do control vessel from here. And then maybe I can do an IVA. No, oh, no, maybe not. Or 
That's what I have to do. Okay. Oh no. Oh, I was stupid and did not lock my rocket. <laughs> well, that's too bad. We we came, we saw, we we mined, and then we failed by not locking our stages, which um, yeah. All right, so <laughs> we had a look, little look at the the Cathay, and, and you know, basically that's all it is: is you, you're mining it, then you can convert it into the fuel that you want, and then um, and then you you can you can go about your business. And usually that business, for me, includes destroying our our way home. Oh, oh shit. There we go. So, while I have a little bit of RCS, there's definitely not enough thrust to, uh, to really get anywhere. Now, I'm missing a Kerbal. Well, I don't know. I wonder. And why are not those... Why is the RCS not working? Oh, it is working. It just doesn't have enough thrust to, to even lift us off. Not that I expected it to. That was more for some final orbital entry. So I, I've made some nice piles of Kerbal parts. Um, <laughs> that's pretty much the, the Cathane module. Um, I mean, I, everything else is, is all stuck. It's just uh, you go, you can mine, you can gather up some materials, and then... Uh, get more fuel and if, as long as you don't accidentally stage your rocket uh, you you end up might uh, might be able to get home or go on further so I just thought I'd give you the little uh, the update on that and um, I don't know I guess it's a, uh, a full-on rescue mission at this point um, and apparently I lost a, a Kerbal at some somewhere along the line unless someone's sitting in the debris here but it doesn't look like it. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for watching. So long for now.